Hello and welcome to this video, which is essentially going to be a tutorial on XPP Auto or XPP Out. Uh, so I'm going to start off here. Um, this might not be the way you will eventually want to use XPP, but I'm going to start off the easiest way I know of to run XPP. So XPP, I've now installed it and I'm going to just double click the app from my applications folder here. And up comes this window, which is going to allow me to drop ODE files in and get XPP started. So I'm going to go through using this ODE file here, which is, um, well, actually, I'm going to call this a predator prey system. It's a Lutka Volterra type uh, interacting species model. So predator prey equations. Now, these are not Lutka, Volterra, Lutka and or Volterra's original equations. I've added in an extra term here, which breaks a degeneracy in the original equations, um, which makes the analysis a little bit more um, well-motivated for doing it in XPP. So uh, you'll notice there's a, a logistic growth of the prey population, and then when there's a predator around, the prey dies off proportional to the product. And the predator dies in the absence of prey, but as long as it's able to eat, um, the, there's a source term of predators. In other words, prey allow the predator to reproduce. So I've non-dimensionalized the equations. If you write this down with an, a, co a coefficient here and a, a carrying capacity here, and then another coefficient that's gone over here and another coefficient on each of these two terms, you can non-dimensionalize the system to what I have here. And so the non-dimensional version of the equations only has two parameters, A and K, and I will play around with those. And for, um, for these values of the parameters, uh, I think I am not at a steady state here with the initial condition, but this is gonna be the initial condition we start with. Okay, so how do we get started? We just, either from your, uh, your folder window or wherever, um, you can do it right here from the header in on a Mac, um, and then you can drop this right into the XPP window, which may look a little bit different on a Windows machine. And what happens is it checks to make sure my file is um, correctly formatted and happy, happy it is. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that mostly hidden. I'll slide it over here and get rid of this folder now. And I'll leave the equations up here, even though we're not gonna really refer to them at all. Okay, so first thing to notice, and this I could have set in the ODE file, is my view is of X versus T. So if I were to solve any equations, it would just show me the prey as a function of time, which I am not so interested in doing. I'd rather look at the phase plane. And so I'm gonna start off by re-accessing this. So I'm gonna put it on a new 2D axis. And let me pull the up the pop-up window out here. So we're gonna change the x-axis instead of being time, we're gonna have it be x, and the y-axis instead of being x will be y. Now I'm gonna go a little bit negative just so that we have a slightly bigger window so we can see what's happening on both sides of the axes. Same thing for y min. Those will normally bottom out at zero because of the fact that this is a population model. And I'll let x max go up as far as two because when we start playing with parameters, that'll be useful. And the same thing with y max. And then I hit OK. And now you can see I have a new plot uh, ax set of axes coming up. So I find it most convenient to plot the null clines first. So I can do that using null clines new. Now notice anytime there is a menu item with a capital letter, they'll all have a capital letter somewhere, not always at the beginning of the word. Um, I can use a keystroke instead. So I could have hit N to do this and then N again to get a new set of null clines. And I'll do that uh, a lot of the time and I'll, I'll try and remember to say out loud what I'm doing as I do it. It's just much more convenient. So you'll notice here in this plot, um, these should be actually two lines that cross, but because of the discretization, this is just a plotting artifact. There really is a red line crossing right through here. Okay, so, um, so the x-axis is down here and the y-axis is up here. And if you go over the null cline calculation, you'll find that the green lines, the vertical one here at one and the horizontal one at the origin, those correspond to 
y dot equals zero. In other words, the prey uh, prey is the only non-zero solution, and the predator is at zero population size, and that is a null cline for the y equation. And then the red equation is an alkaline for the x, and you get uh, two lines, but this one, one of them is diagonal and one is vertical. Okay, so you can see the crossings of the two. There's only two crossings for the parameter values I'm at right now. There's gonna be a third crossing off the screen, but because that's at a negative population size, I'm going to ignore it. So let's draw um, some initial conditions, and I'll do this using the letters. I'm gonna click where I'm gonna hit I, for initial conditions and then M for mouse and that will let me click in various places so I'm going to try starting down here and see what happens you'll notice I had to click twice one was to bring the focus to that window and the second click was to actually click in the screen so I'm going to do another one I M and again I have to bring the focus into the window and then you can see it's wrapping around. We see at least two solutions that are coming into this one. So it's looking like this is a node. It's possible uh, that it's a spiral, except that there's a null cline here that's dead horizontal and has all the vectors horizontal along it. So I can't cross that line with a spiral because I have to go parallel to that line if I'm on it. So this actually couldn't be spiraling in even very, very tightly that we can't see here. This has to be coming in in a non-spiraling way, which means this is going to be a stable node. All right, let's get a little bit closer to the origin with the solution. I'm going to get really close here. And you can see if I'm right on the red line, there's no prey. And so the predator population just crashes to zero. So if I'm a little bit over to the right, I should get close to zero. But as the predator population dies, the prey start to pick up and then the predators well, the predators don't survive in the end, they actually crash, and that's just a choice of parameter values in this case. Okay, so that gives us a rough idea um, of what the phase plane looks like. So let's just test to make sure our um, hand-waving classification of the steady states is correct. So I'm going to click on singular points and use the mouse, and now bring the focus to the window. And you can try and click right on it, but even if you're within a, a small range of it, you could be fairly certain that the uh, numerical solution method that finds the steady state will converge to the nearby one. And I believe it's using a Newton method, so you can uh, look up what kind of complicated scenarios can occur if you click too far from that steady state. It's a little bit hard to predict which of the two you're going to go to. But in this case, we are going to converge to the one at the origin. And so I get a little window that popped up off screen here that says print eigenvalues, yes. And if you look down here behind the window in the main XBP window, you can see that one of the eigenvalues at the origin is positive, one of them is negative, and they both have zero complex or imaginary parts. And so that tells us that we have a saddle at the origin. And we kind of saw that already. And you can actually see where the negative eigenvalue is right along the vertical axis, the y-axis, you have the um, solution is coming down, so that means the vectors would point straight down here, and that means that the eigenvector associated with the negative, the, the negative eigenvalue is 0, 1, or any multiple that sits of that that sits on the y-axis. Uh, and then there's growth along the x-axis, that corresponds to the eigenvalue 1, and that's the eigenvector 1, 0. Okay, so that's the first one, and then we can do the other one with another singular points calculation. Uh, no, singular points is um, another term for steady states. Um, singular in the sense that the vector field has a singularity at those points. Okay, so this is a, a box that popped up after the first click. You'll notice I wasn't able to choose singular points because it was waiting for me to answer this question. I am not going to answer this. I'm not going to say yes here. I'm going to say no. You can play around with that and see what you get. It should give you the stable and unstable manifolds of the steady state at the origin. But I'm not going to address those right now. And then we also get a little box that says what the coordinates of the steady state are. So these are essentially zero here. 10 to the minus 7 and 10 to the minus 8. And we also see that we had one real eigenvalue and one, one real positive and one real negative. This would be how many complex eigenvalues with positive real part and how many complex eigenvalues with negative real part and whether we're sitting right at an imaginary uh, eigenvalue. And that would correspond to uh, a Hopf bifurcation. 
I'll say something about hot bifurcations in XPP in a subsequent video. All right, so now let's just do the other steady state. So singular points by mouse, and I click really close. Second click is actually on the screen. And now I get that print eigenvalues option again. Let's see what those are. And you can see now I get a negative one and a negative 0.5 with zero complex parts. So that is in fact a node. And in fact, we can tell that the slow direction, so the point minus 0 0.5 eigenvector, eigenvalue, should have an eigenvector that lies right parallel to the x-axis. And, um, and I'll, I'll let you think about why that has to be the case. Yes, it does. <laughs> Had to double think for a second there. And then I get a slightly different version of this question here. Does it, do I want to draw the strong sets? And I'm going to say no again. You can explore that to see what it gives you. But that basically will show you, well, actually, maybe I'll do it. And we'll see where the fast eigenvector comes in. But in a nonlinear equation, it's only the eigenvector close by. And then it deviates. And that becomes what we call the unstable manifold, which is the extension of the unstable, sorry, the stronger uh, eigenvector approach, but as you leave further away from the linear regime. So that is the, the tangent to this curve would be the eigenvector of the larger eigenvalue. Interesting, those two eigenvectors seem to be very close. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a calculation worth testing or exploring. All right, so that is um, plotting null clines, drawing some solution curves, and finding the steady states and their stability and eigenvalues. In subsequent videos, I will go through more calculations of the same type, but with different um, features of uh, XPP, and then eventually I'll get to auto as well.